couple things here. This is our cortisol pattern, our daily free cortisol pattern. And you can see you wake up here at A and your cortisol should taper up in the morning. This is within the first hour and then go down throughout the day. So this patient actually started with A here, right? This is cortisol with a pretty good rhythm out of the gates. But instead of peaking up 100% or so, they actually went down. So they started here. Instead of having that nice rise, they went down. This is big. This is a big problem, right? Not going to have the energy. You're not going to have that good rhythm, that good uh, up and at them kind of energy in the morning. And they trace low the entire day, relatively low and flat the entire day. So we call this a flat cortisol rhythm. Relatively speaking, it's flat. They should be starting here at A, peaking up at B, and then gently tapering down throughout the day. And they basically start at A at their highest point, and they go down throughout the day. So very low and flat cortisol rhythm. Now, when we look at their cortisol levels, their free cortisol, which is A plus B plus C plus D, this is what's represented on the graph here. And again, if you're listening on the podcast, click down below to watch the video link if you want. If not, we'll just try to describe it. Their free cortisol, when you add A plus B plus C plus D is 73. That's very low. So if you see this little gauge here, imagine this is like the volume knob on your stereo. This is all the way up high, this star, and this on the left is all the way up low. So they're almost all the way to the, to the left. It's like their volume knob is like 5% on. It's like having a whisper out of their stereo. So 73 is very, very low. Now, this is the cool part, right? So normally with a salivary test, right, the Dutch test is the dried urine for testing comprehensive hormones. The benefit of this test is we get a window into free cortisol, but also total cortisol because it's urine. With a salivary test, we'd only be able to see this 73 number, which is the, which is the free cortisol. That's 2 to 5% of all cortisol is free and biologically available. The other total, which looks at the free, which is the 2 to 5%, plus everything else that's protein-bound, let's give us a window into all of our cortisol we're making. Now, this is the cool thing. We never would have this number on a free cortisol test from saliva, but you can see their total cortisol, which is everything – is very high. It's 9304, right? It's way off the charts high. So they have very, very, very low free cortisol, very, very, very high total cortisol. So there's not like an adrenal fatigue issue or like a low adrenal pattern, even though the cortisol is low, their adrenals are making a lot of it, right? And this is a common pattern we see when there's HPA access dysfunction. So if you go down to this page over here, you're going to see what the HPA access is. I'll go back and I'll, I'll just explain this in a minute. But if we go down to this page here, the HPA access, we have this feedback loop from the hypothalamus and the pituitary. This is the HP portion of the HPA access. And this communication feedback loop talks to the adrenals, where we make cortisol, where we make DHEA. And um, we have our free cortisol. We have our total cortisol. We have our DHEA. This feedback loop from our corticotropic releasing hormone to the adrenal corticotropic releasing hormone. This feedback loop is our HPA access. And when this starts to break down and that feedback loop, that miscommunication happens, this is where we start seeing a very high amount of total cortisol and a very, very low amount of free cortisol. Does that make sense out of the gates? Questions there, Evan? Makes perfect sense.